Welcome back to Cyhawk Game Day. Iowa and Iowa State both opening up conference play today. Uh, we'll start things off with the Hawkeyes. They're going up against Rutgers. Not known to be a football powerhouse, but they are 3-0 this season and have been playing some pretty good ball as of late. Yeah, and their defense has been really stout. I think this is one of the lowest over-under totals in, like, <laughs> recent gambling history. So uh, I think it's under 40. It's like 38, which, ex which means neither team is expected to get to 20 points, which, <laughs> if that's the case, you're in for a heck of a Big Ten game. But the thing is, is that both these defenses are legitimately really good. As far as one of the better measures of defensive play, if you look at just pure statistics, is yards per play. Just because it doesn't matter if you run a thousand plays or ten plays, if you have a low yards per play total, it means your defense is doing what you're supposed to. Well, Iowa is the best team in the country in yards per play. They're averaging 2.92 yards. Well, Rutgers, they're tenth. They're just under four yards per play. So these are two really good defenses. I mentioned in the first block that, well, Iowa had a good game against Nevada, but they got to go against now a good defense in Piscataway, New Jersey, halfway across the country. So I'm not really expecting a big offensive shootout because quality of offensive play and qual the, the quality of both defenses. So interesting Big Ten matchup today in Piscataway. Yeah, I, I like to think of this game as kind of the Spider-Man meme game because they're both very similar in that they have conservative offenses and their defenses really kind of carry a lot of the load in this. Um, but kind of shifting gears to the offense, do you think this will kind of be a both, we're going to see both offenses be conservative and kind of whoever can make the least amount of mistakes wins this game? Well, I don't know, think they can. I don't think either capable. <laughs> if you okay, so if you're trying to learn how to skateboard, is it best to try and do different crazy tricks or is it best to try and just stay on the skateboard? Right now, Iowa doesn't have the capacity to try and do simple tricks when they can't stay on the skateboard. So right now, I think the thing they have to do is just do anything they can to have a functional productive offense because they're trying to complete long passes for the first time all season. They're trying to establish a consistent running game for the first time all season, whether they're being cautious, whether they're being aggressive, they just got to move the ball. Yeah, well, let's switch gears to Iowa State. This is probably one of the more compelling uh, Big 12 matchups right out of the gate. Uh, Matt Campbell talked in his press conference earlier this week. Baylor has a lot of speed in all three phases. So how do you go about kind of going up against a team that is just so fast, so physical? Well, don't let them get started. I mean, it's a, it's a really, it's a cliche answer, but the best way to defend speed is to not let that speed get fast. Is if you've got a wide receiver that's really good at breaking plays or a running back that's really good at breaking stuff open, you got a quarterback thing to it. Baylor has all those things. Well, if it's an immediate catch tackle, doesn't really matter how fast they are because you've got guys to bring them to the ground. So the thing that they've got to do is they've got to bring multiple bodies to the party on defense to tackle in space to make sure they can't get open. And then defensively, you've got to make sure that you match their physicality and put them in bad angles where that speed is less of a factor. But they are a, Baylor has is and always has been a very, very fast team. Yeah, and we also heard uh, from head coach Dave Aranda for Baylor uh, talking about how, you know, their team has kind of dealt with the, the external pressure of, you know, people expect them to be good and it kind of has caused a little bit of tension in their offense. Do you think Iowa State maybe has the upper hand in that they don't necessarily, they're not dealing with that outside pressure. In fact, a lot of people weren't really expecting much from them, whereas Baylor, a lot of people expect a lot from them. Do you feel like that may play into this a little bit? Yeah, I mean, one of the fun things about the Baylor-Iowa State game is there, if you basically put Baylor in red and yellow and you put Iowa State in green and white, it's pretty much the same team. They, they are identical mirror images of each other. Well, Iowa State last year had all this pressure, had all this expectation. Baylor this year has all this pressure and this expectation. So when you compare Iowa to Iowa State, or excuse me, Iowa State to Baylor, it's like comparing Iowa State this year to Iowa State last year. And the freedom that Iowa State's able to play with Baylor still has the capacity to execute and do that, but they've got to trust that, you know what? How many, how many wins does expectations actually give you? None. How many losses does it give you? None. It doesn't matter. Just go out and execute and be what you are going to be, and they can be fine because they are an excellent team if they allow themselves to be. Absolutely. Well, let's take a look at those uh, kickoff times real quick. Um, I would say having the early game, the 11 a.m. kickoff, the dreaded 11 a.m. kickoff um, here at Jack Trice Stadium. Um, Iowa has the night game again. Hopefully no weather delays over there in New Jersey. They kick off at 6 o'clock, I believe, against Rutgers. Uh, but to give us a little bit of a look at what the weather is going to be looking like today, we'll send it over to a Local 5 Chief Meteorologist Brad Edwards. Well, hey, Rain, that looks like a perfect day for some football up in Ames. I'll tell you what, there were some clouds around in the morning hours, but the sunshine will prevail, it looks like, through the afternoon. Now, what's going to happen here? We'll have a lot of sunshine 
for the most part, just some high clouds coming in during later in the game. The winds will actually be getting stronger, so that might affect the game a little bit toward the end of the game. That wind could be gusting maybe up to 20 miles per hour out of the west northwest, but it's going to be great for fans and great for the players. Now we got a night game out in uh, Rutgers, I was going to be playing out at Rutgers. It's going to be a pretty good evening out here. Temperatures will be mostly in the 60s early on as the kickoff goes out. The wind's not as strong. Temperatures in the 50s. So both games looking great as far as the weather goes. Well, there's still plenty more to come here on Cyhawk Game Day. Uh, one thing we're going to get into is will Will McDonald uh, become the all-time Big 12 sack leader? That and more after the break.